The carburetor repair kit includes the parts you need to rebuild your carburetor. It consists of gaskets, reed valves, the diaphragm, an internal filter, and the metering needle. The carburetor can be plugged by debris or corrosion. When this occurs, you will need to disassemble the carburetor and carefully clean it. The kit includes the parts of the carburetor that require maintenance or that might be damaged during disassembly, such as the gaskets. Installing a repair kit in your carburetor is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi. I'm Mark Sochester. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the intake tube from the air filter housing and the carburetor base. Now remove the screws that secure the base and the carburetor. I'll loosen the nut that secures the throttle cable to the carburetor. And now I can remove the cable. I'll crack open the fuel tank to relieve any pressure and then remove the fuel lines. With the carburetor removed from the engine, now I can begin disassembling it. Two things you'll want to do first. The first one is to clean it using some brake cleaner. You'll want to get the majority of the debris off the carburetor body so you don't get it on the internal parts. Next, I like to take a scratch awl and just make a small mark on both the throttle body and the carburetor body. This is helpful when I go to reassemble it to make sure I get everything aligned properly. Now I can begin disassembling the carburetor. I'll remove the four screws that secure the purge bulb, as well as the lower components of the carburetor. As I disassemble the carburetor, I found it's a good idea to lay out the parts in the order that you remove them. It makes reassembly much easier. This piece has the metering needle. I'll remove the screw to remove the metering needle. On the back side of this piece is the internal filter, and I'll use a pick to remove it. Now on the main carburetor body, I'll remove the O-ring seal and the screws that secure the throttle body. With the carburetor disassembled, next you'll need to clean any of the parts you're not going to replace. So the body, bracket, throttle body, as well as the other internal parts. There's a couple ways you can clean it. You can use brake or carburetor cleaner and carefully spray out all of the tiny passages. This works good, but some of the really tough debris, such as varnish or corrosion, won't necessarily come loose with brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner. A better way to clean is to use an ultrasonic cleaner. The ultrasonic does a great job of cleaning the tiny little passages on each of the parts. With everything clean, I'll dump out the contents of the rebuild kit. You'll notice right off there's many more parts in the kit than you find in the carburetor. That's because the kits are used on multiple models of carburetor. So the first thing I'll do is separate out the components. I have reed valves and gaskets, the diaphragm, another style of diaphragm that obviously wasn't used in our carburetor. Once I have everything separated out, I'll begin to compare parts and replace the old parts for new. I'll start with the diaphragm gasket. Next, the diaphragm. Move on to the reed valve. the reed valve gasket, the metering needle, as well as its spring and hinge, the internal filter, the metering needle lever, 
the carburetor gasket, and it looks like that's all the parts. Now I can begin reassembling the carburetor. First, the throttle body, and I'll align the two marks that I made earlier, the bracket, and I'll secure the throttle body with the screws. I'll install the new gasket from the kit. Next, I'll install the internal filter and the metering needle. I'll start with the internal filter. I'll place it over the opening with the outer flange facing up. And then I found the best way to install it is to push it in with the back side of a Sharpie marker. Now I'll install the metering needle. I'll pre-install the hinge pin into the lever, hang the metering needle from the lever, and place the spring inside the base. Then I'll align this assembly with the base, and once it's in place, I'll secure it with the screw. Now I can install the gasket, the reed valve, the metering base, the diaphragm gasket, the diaphragm, the air purge body, and the purge bulb and cover and I'll secure it with the screws. Now I can reinstall the carburetor. As I install the carburetor, I'll need to identify which of the nipples is the incoming and which is the purge side. To do that, I'll place my finger over each of them and prime the carburetor. With this nipple, as I prime the carburetor, it's stiff and no air is passing through. I'll plug the other side. Now when I prime, you'll see the primer bulb doesn't want to return and a vacuum is formed at my finger. So this is the incoming line. I'll connect the incoming hose to the incoming nipple and then the purge line. Now I'll reinstall the throttle cable. I'll loop the cable through the throttle body, place the elbow in the bracket, and then tighten it with the nut. And I'll secure the carburetor and the air filter base back to the engine. And I'll tighten the fuel cap that I loosened previously. And I'll finish up by reinstalling the intake pipe. I'll remove the diffuser from the pipe, install it back to the base, and now I can slide the pipe over it. And once the pipe's in place, I'll tighten both the clamps. And that's how you can install a carburetor repair kit in your small engine's carburetor. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.